All right, in the last video, we looked at uh, voltaic cells, and we drew the picture of the two beakers with the wires and the salt bridge and all that stuff. I will tell you that that takes a lot of work, and most people aren't great at drawing things, so we're going to simplify this. There is a, like, shortened, simplified version of how to draw this, and these are called cell diagrams. Here's the general gist of how we do this. The anode is always placed on the left side. Cathode is going to be cathode is going to be on the right side. Okay. We use a single line. So a single vertical line which, you know, like that, um, to represent the boundary between the electrode and the solution. So we had an electrode and it was sitting in the solution. The, like, the difference between those is represented by a single line. double line so you know single line double line is used to represent the salt bridge that separates the two half reactions And we always write it with the electrodes on the far edge of the diagram. I intentionally, in the last video, drew them like that. So what we're going to have is there'll be a single line separating the zinc and the zinc 2 plus, if we did this one, and a copper and the copper 2 plus. And then the double line will separate this half react, this beaker from this beaker. The electrodes are always drawn off the edges. Okay, I intentionally drew it like that here. Okay. So, okay. So, if we wanted to represent this this voltaic cell using a cell diagram. We said the anode is on the left side, which is already how I had it drawn, but that's okay. This is supposed to blend nicely to cell diagrams. We draw the zinc on the far end. We have to put state symbols on everything. It's a solid. And there's a single line separating, separating the electrode and the solution. Okay. There's probably some sort of anion here, but it's not actually part of the reaction. It's basically zinc forming zinc 2+. plus. And then we have a double line to represent the salt bridge. So this and this literally represents all of this half of the reaction. Okay, the salt bridge can be pretty much any ions as long as they flow in there nicely. That doesn't have to be sodium sulfate, it really doesn't matter. Okay, and then on the other side we're going to do the cathode. We need the, the, the electrode on the far end, so the copper 2 plus is going to become copper solid. Okay, so this is what our half reaction, or our cell diagram for this voltaic cell would look like. Obviously, this gives us significantly more details, but it's a significantly more difficult drawing. <laughs> it requires way more artistic skill. I'm not even saying mine is good, but it takes a lot more work than this. But this represents the exact same thing. This is going, the, on this half of the reaction, it's going from zinc to zinc 2 plus zinc to zinc 2 plus. On this half reaction, it's going from copper 2 plus to copper solid. Okay, the electrodes are at the end, 
we use single lines to separate the two, the, the, the electrode and the solution, and then we use a double line to separate the two half reactions. Okay, so just to make sure you can look at this later and see what's going on, let me label everything really quickly. So this is the anode, which is the oxidation process. This is the cathode, which is the reduction half or the reduction half reaction. And here's the other nice thing: we had the reactions for each the reactions kind of written out at the bottom. They're already in the right order. So for this half reaction, this is reactants, this is products. For this half reaction, this is reactants. And this is products. Okay, so if we wanted to write the balanced equation for this, what we would do is we have these two reactants and these two products. We have zinc solid plus copper two plus aqueous forming zinc two plus aqueous plus copper solid. And the idea is that because this is higher up on the activity series, this is more likely to become a solid, or sorry, be more likely to dissolve and become an ion. And the copper two plus is very, very low on the, on the activity series, which means that because it has a plus two charge, it's a solution, it will readily become a solid. So essentially two electrons got transferred here. We just managed to separate this, re this half reaction from this half reaction so we had this half reaction and this half reaction. We separate them and put a wire between them, and these electrons, instead of just uh, instead of pouring through the solution, are pouring through the wire. Okay, but honestly, if you can write it like this, I don't actually ever need you to draw the like big version of this thing. Okay. I will point out that not all half reactions involve a metal. <laughs> Okay, there are some of these that don't work like that. So sometimes we use platinum as uh, it's used as a, an electrode. Okay, so here's the problem is that basically there are some reactions, like for example, it is entirely possible to have this half reaction and there is an exchange of electrons. You could have chlorine ions and then, you know, once it receives some electrons, or sorry, once it loses some electrons, you form Cl2 gas and two electrons. Electrons are exchanged in this process. It is an, well, in this case, it is becoming more positive, so it's an oxidation process, which means we could have it as one of the half reactions. Chlorine gas does not hook up nicely to a wire. <laughs> we can't do it like that. Okay, so this reaction can occur, but we use platinum as our electrode. Platinum is really inert. It is happy to just sit there and pass electrons through it without actually getting oxidized or reduced anywhere in the process. It just, it just doesn't play that game very nicely, which makes it a good electrode to shove into other things. So. This now means we have three things rather than two. Right here we had an electrode and a solution. We had two things on this half reaction. If this was going to be written as an anode, so an oxidation process, uh, which is how we've got it right now, you would have platinum on the far left because it is the electrode, then you would have a single line, and then you would have the two chemicals, and it would be written in the order that it's going. So it would be Cl minus aqueous and Cl2 plus, uh, or Cl2 gas. This would be that half reaction. If you wanted this as a cathode, you would literally just reverse, literally just reverse everything. So it'd be Cl2 gas, Cl minus aqueous, and platinum solid. Okay, so not a huge deal not overly complicated, but we are more likely to use this than we are to like draw the entire Voltaic cell with all the beakers and stuff.